Okay, so we have almost all of our flat color in, but not all of it. So how can we see what's still needed? Instead of just having a white background, this is what I recommend. Double click on your background if you haven't done this already. Label it blank white. By double clicking on it and labeling it, it, it makes it just a regular layer, which allows you to lock it permanently. So then lock your blank white layer, right? Then duplicate it and you get a blank white copy and just turn that to gray, right? And then say, edit fill 50% gray and then lock that and then duplicate that and change it to blank black. And then go to edit fill 100% black, right? And then lock that. So if it can look good, if your illustration can look good on all three backgrounds, then you have a lot of versatility. And you can see what I haven't colored yet, right? I don't have flat colors for the lettering and I don't have flat coloring for like these kind of crown shapes. Right? So let's do the lettering, that's, that's pretty easy. What do I do? I go to my vector, I hold down shift, I have contiguous turned on, regular tolerance. Whoops. I skip the K and the I because they're open. I do everything else. And then I move to my flat color layer, right? And I can bring in the K and the I, but then I have to subtract Actually, no, this will work. Okay. Uh, let's go back a step. I don't want to make it more complicated than it needs to be. So these are all the easy ones. So let me just go ahead and put those in. And I'm going to pick a color that's different than the other colors. I was thinking kind of a, a strong red. What I like is that it will only let me fill it where I've selected, right? And now I do the K and the I, and how can I do those easily? I can take the magic wand on the flat color layer. Hmm. Yeah, this should work. And then I can do that with a different red, just so you can see. Yep. Right. And then you see how it colored in a lot of the black. And then I can go back to my line art layer and select the black, right? And then delete that out from what I had just to keep it really clean. Okay. And then this is the beauty of flatting. If I decide I like that color more than this color, this is what I can do. I say a uh, magic wand, uncheck contiguous, and I just click this and now it's all the colors everywhere in my flats. And then I can just replace them really easily. I won't replace that eyeball. So I'll keep that separate. Right. So once you've flatted, it's pretty easy to see how everything works. Okay, what's the other thing I need? Um, I'm going to change the flatting of this a little bit just with the, I'm going to make it a deep purple. I don't like how dark it is. 
Uh, I'm changing my mind. I'm gonna make it a brown. Maybe a, this deep purple. <laughs> this is a tricky, tricky color to get right. Because I'm gonna have to do some duotoning there. Yeah, that works better. Okay, and then now for this part, which is a little trickier. I go to my vectors and I use my lasso and this is more arbitrary, right? I'm going to use my tablet and I'm just going to draw the shape I want to fill in. I know it's going to fit this. I try to stay within my line art. And again, it's a spot illustration. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. We're not going to be looking at these with magnifying glasses. Then I'm going to do it here too. It's going to pick a shape. I might decide to cut it off more like that. So remember, you can modify your selections. I mean, option to take away, shift to add. And then last one, shift. OK. So now I have to pick a color. I'm going to go for a really pale yellow. I put it in for the flat local color layer. OK, so now I have flats. And I can start playing with them, changing them. Right? What I usually do is duplicate. And I'll call that initial one my flatting layer, because it has everything. Everything is something that's individually selectable. And then I'll lock it and I'll turn it off. Now, with this, I'm going to call it my flat local color. Because now I actually want to pick my actual colors. But now it makes it so much easier. I'm just going to use the paint bucket and I'm going to pick a color and just drop it in. Right? And it will change it immediately for me. And if I want to make sure I get all of them, I can use the magic wand first, pick the color, because contiguous is turned off, and then drop it in. And it will only let me fill it in where it's everything. Now, what if I don't want... just these limited colors? Well, this is where having some um, inspiration exemplars is really helpful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my unicorn one, because this already just has flat color, right? And I'm going to click on my original. I have three files open. I go to Window, Arrange, and I'm going to say 3 Upstacked. I'm going to go ahead and make my window a little bit bigger. Lots of working space. Okay, three up stacked. You can then push it around. It means that you can see three Photoshop files at once within your workspace. And think of this as your color palette. I'm going to shrink these on. So between my swatches, which I like because of their vintage feel, right? I can also steal colors directly from these guys. So I might get some inspiration. So let's see. Let's try this kind of orange. So magic wand, go back to this. I'm staying on my flat color layer. Notice everything else is locked. So I can't accidentally paint somewhere I don't want to paint. 
I do all of that? Seems pretty dark, so let me go for the highlight instead. If I hold down Option, I can get right to the dropper tool from the paint bucket. Yeah, so there's something nice about that. Okay, next, what do I want to try? Let's see, magic wand. Uh, let's see. Let's try all of these. A little bit closer. All of my interior things. I like the blues. Let's steal the blue. Steal the light blue. Paint that in. I remember this is on a copy, okay? Then let's see, maybe this orange, let's steal this orange, and let's put that in for the bull's head. Let's take this orange, let's take this pink, hold down option, steal it. I put that in for the muzzle, that's too dark. Light pink, it's pretty much what I have. For the horns, I could try these. Oops. And it will show you in your swatches the last few that you've chosen, right? So you can just go back to them. Drop them in. And I can steal from this as well. These different grays are nice. A little different. Yeah, that works. The purple in the nostril here. Let's use that. I like these kind of tan colors. No, maybe a light tan. Maybe something there. Golden yellow, yes. The greens, these are very Santa Cruz. <laughs> Maybe, it's like a taco place. So for me, I have to kind of experiment with some crazy things to kind of get where I want to go. And you can see, big differences right depending on what flat colors you use all right so that is flat coloring what else can we do to make it work on the different background well this is another step i'm going to make a duplicate of my vector line art right that unlocks it then i'm going to use my magic wand with contiguous checked and click on the outside of it. Right. Actually not, not of that, sorry. I'm gonna to go to my flat color layer. Let's see, how can I get both? I want the combination of them. So this is actually, this is an easy way to conceptualize it. There's a few ways you can do it. So if you turn off your backgrounds, but you turn on all of your coloring layers and your vector layer, then go to your top layer, hold down option, and then say layer merge visible. You'll get a layer that has everything in it, right? Then I want you to use your magic wand and select the negative space. 